important one. Shane Warne always demanded centre stage and a crowd. And last night, the King of Spin had tens of thousands gather to remember his incredible career and legacy at a touching memorial service at the G. Here's just some of the highlights. The master of the MCG given a perfect final farewell. A crowd fit for royalty, thousands came out to celebrate the life of the King of Spin. Global superstars lined up to pay tribute to a legend they got to call a friend. And all the things you do. The tributes were heartfelt. There's no one like you, warning, and there never will be again. Funny. Bogan. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Bogan. And deeply touching. Looking forward to a future without Shane is inconceivable. But it was the Warren children who stole the show. Dad was our shining star in life, and now he's shining down on all of us. We will do you so proud, Dad, and we are so proud of everything you have achieved. We didn't have to do much for us to be happy together. Life was so easy and peaceful with you in it. You will always be with us, Dad. Just not in the way that we had hoped. Remembering their hero, the king of cricket, who, in his own words, just bowled a bit of leg spin. She won't forsake me. I'm loving angels instead. Isabella Stachkowski joins us now outside the G this morning. Is there, there'll be a permanent tribute there to Warney. Carl, there certainly will. The Shane Warn stand was unveiled last night by his three children, Brooke, Jackson and Summer, following those incredibly powerful speeches. They were very brave, speaking out in front of more than 50,000 people and hundreds of millions who watched on from overseas, reflecting on their father. Of course, as I say, more than 50,000 people here inside the G, filling up those stands. But all around Australia, people watched on from stadiums at the Gabba, at Optus Stadium and at the SCG. Out the front, in a way, Shane Warne's statue was really standing guard. And I want to show you this morning what it looks like here. Fresh tributes have been laid overnight. There are flowers, there are flags, there are beers, there are burgers. You may be able to see this gentleman here now doing what many have done, just taking a moment to reflect. There are a number of notes there as well. They read things like, thanks for the memories and the world's stopped spinning. Carl, an incredibly fitting tribute last night, very emotional, but it really was a celebration of the life of our spin king. Well said, Isa. Thank you. Time now for footy chat with Broncos champ Sam Thiday and AFL legend Nathan Brown. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. Um, first up, let's talk about last night's send-off of the king of spin, Shane Warne. Sammy, uh, watched by millions around the globe. Uh, what did you make of the farewell? Uh, it was absolutely amazing and incredible. Uh, what a uh, terrific human being. Uh, he was someone that uh, I loved and admired as a young kid. Um, I was no good at cricket, but uh, <laughs> I definitely uh, used to try and spin the ball like Warney. I had the I had the Shane Warne uh, spin ball with the different finger marks and yeah, stuff on I it. Had that it too. was absolutely brilliant as a kid. <laughs> yeah. We all had that. It was so hard to do though. Um, Brownie, the G, an iconic venue for cricket and the AFL, as you know only too well. Um, Warney now has a stand in his honour. Perfect. Yeah, and it's a massive stand. It takes up half the ground and uh, everybody loved him. Cricket, footy and what could be said that wasn't said last night with an Elton John song, Johnny Stevens. But I thought the great part of the night was when Nasser Hussain said they used to Google what the flipper was when it first came out. They couldn't pick it. <laughs> and then the fact that he sent an email to the producers of Peaky Blinders and the response came back that, oh, sorry, Shane, they didn't have porcelain veneers back in 1865, so you can't do the walk-on. So that was just warning. It was great. It was, it was fun and we celebrated his Life. I just the kids too. I thought um, that was wonderful from them. Um, takes a lot of courage to get up there and it does. And, and fighting all those emotions. So uh, it was a fitting farewell. Well, it was the scene of so many of his greatest sporting achievements. His second home, you might say. So it was only fitting that the MCG roared to life last night for one final salute to the King of Spin, Shane Warne. Well, let's bring in close friend of Warney and last night's Master of Ceremonies. Uh, he brought it all together, didn't he? Eddie Maguire in Melbourne. Uh, congratulations, Eddie. Mm -hmm. um, lovely to see you this morning after it was a, a really terrific night. We'll get on to the service in just a moment, but I did want to ask you quickly, if we can, um, that sad news overnight with the passing of Ernie Carroll. 
Um, for those who may not recognise yeah. the name, he was um, the creative genius behind Aussie Ostrich. We grew up with him, didn't he? What a, what a comedic genius and what timing he had with Daryl. Yeah, he was unbelievable. Uh, Aussie Ostrich, I mean, it's quite incredible when you think about it, Calter. Yes. So when you think about it, uh, when people came from all over the world and they're looking at Daryl Summers yes. and an ostrich, a pink ostrich, <laughs> <laughs> with somebody's arm up his, you know, his head. And uh, I remember... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And then, and then a dicky knee with a you know head on a stick. Yes. This this is this is variety in Australia. And boy, was it ever! It was unbelievable. Daryl and uh, our, our hearts reach out to all the team from mm. Hey Hey at Saturday, and particularly Daryl Summers, yeah. who of course was business partners with Ernie Carroll as well and co-creators of Hey Hey at Saturday. But uh, I mean, I remember it because uh, my my hero, as you know, was Peter McKenna, the great Collingwood full forward in the early 70s, who actually was on Hey Hey at Saturday and was replaced by Aussie. Ostrich. It was in the paper. <laughs> Out McKenna in Ostrich. <laughs> but you're going to feel guilty getting yeah. replaced by a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're Someone it. said, Macca, your, your career in TV is stuffed. And he said, and so's my replacement. <laughs> but, uh, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, and the, uh, look, but, uh, I think the, was, the, uh, the timing just, that he had with Daryl yeah. um, was, was incredible, mm. wasn't it? And, and, you know, he was never oh, the yeah. overstated. Um, he was the understated. Uh, and that was a powerful comedic duo. Let's go back to last night, my man. Um, it, it was a fitting yeah. tribute um, to Warney. Really, really great stuff. Yeah, thanks, uh, guys. And, and again, thank you for your support in the build-up. It was wonderful last night. We were knocked over by the response from right yeah. around the world. And, you know, the, the uh, News Limited papers are saying this morning that over a billion people might have watched uh, because uh, the, the words coming through from America, from certainly from the United Kingdom and the subcontinent and South Africa, has just been enormous. And naturally, mm -hmm. right here in his backyard here in Australia, he was a proud Australian. And we tried to do him proud last night. And I was just so delighted that, you know, John Stevens was sensational. Yeah. And he had Anthony Collier's rendition of the prayer. Wow. What about that? And then the internationals. I mean, I told you yesterday, guys, about how these four people mm. just reached out and, and really given of themselves. Mm. And Elton on stage in America, stopping his concert, putting up the shots mm. of Warney, doing all that. Uh, Ed Sheeran, you know, you could feel the heartfelt rendition there. Yeah. You know, Chris Martin from Coldplay, I mean, he, he did about three or four different goes at the instrumental that he sent to us, then he shot another one, then he shot another one, Felt then he it. did Yellow. And then, of course, Robbie Williams, you know, finally was able to actually find a place to do this. And, uh, you know, Robbie sent that in last night from Switzerland. So, you know, it was it was just fantastic. And then all his mates, you know, we wanted it to be a combination of what Warney was about. He loved his music. He loved his mates. He loved his poker. He was great fun. He was a wizard on the cricket pitch. He was a deep thinking guy. And we heard that. As, you know, we laughed. The United Nations got involved in Warney's funeral. Can you believe it? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and all the other things. Uh, yeah. The Flory Institute, and, uh, you know, it was just wonderful. And then ultimately, uh, one of the great lines somebody said was the, the best hat-trick Warney ever took was his three kids. Yeah. yeah. And uh, last night, Jackson and uh, Summer and Brooke, wow, weren't they just unbelievable? Just incredible. And Keith and Jason, their heartfelt uh, thoughts. So I think we got in two and a half hours pretty much a, a great balance. And mm. the mighty G looked magnificent. And, you know, that's Shane Warne's stance. It, it, it's already... Looks like home, doesn't it, to the yeah. public? Yeah. And, and they loved him. There was 50,000 here last night. And it was a, a coolish night in Melbourne. COVID's around the place again. And it was quite remarkable. Uh, when those lights went on during the prayer with Anthony Kalia, wow, it was just spectacular. Yeah. And look, Eddie, as you're speaking, we're just looking at the new Shane Warne stand there and his three kids. Um, that would have been so tough for them to get through last night. I just, I applauded. I mean, it was so heartfelt. And obviously we heard from Shane's dad earlier in the night, Keith. Um, he spoke as well. And for me watching it, I just had so many moments where I thought, he'd love this, Shane. He would absolutely love this. Yeah. It was. It's you know. It's always the the great tragedy of death. Sometimes is is as much that you wish the person who was here knew how much he was loved and admired. Um, and uh, but I don't think he had that issue as far as these kids were concerned and his family. They loved and adored him, and he them as well. And you know, I think again, congratulations to Simone on the way those three mm. kids have been brought up in difficult situations in the in the glaze of the media, the controversy that that surrounded Shane at times. Uh, you know, a, a broken marriage, etc., etc. But they they worked at it and they got it together. 
because they had a genuine love for the kids. And mm. there's probably a lesson there for, for all of us in that situation. And if that's the focus, it's amazing what can work from it. But uh, look, uh, it, it was just a, a spectacular night. Uh, you know, and again, you know, it just showed the world, I think, the power of, uh, you know, what a great television industry we have. Uh, Matt Kadinsky from Mushroom, uh, Peter Jones Events. You know, they're all, these are all local people coming together. I was proud of my team at Jam TV. And then everyone coming together, all the networks, you know, it was, uh, you know, driven as well by Michael Healy at Channel 9 and, uh, you know, for Seven to get on board and Ten and the ABC and Fox Footy and Fox Telp, unbelievable. Um, just one final word. I mean, I think that shot of his kids above his name, um, mm. uh, he would have been incredibly uh, moved about that. I heard Mark Nicholas yeah. on on Sky News Sorry. UK this morning um, talking about how he just sucked every bit of marrow out of life uh, and that he brought theatre to the game. Um, and for him to be farewelled in the theatre that he loved most um, it was very fitting last night. Yeah. Your final words? Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah, well, look, we, we tailored it around who we knew to be Warnie. And luckily, mm. yeah, Luke Tunnicliffe, uh, who was the executive producer of the show, was Warnie's poker mate. Uh, yeah, he knew him well. He absolutely knew him well. Um, he, he was with the family for the last three weeks, basically every day. So we were actually able to, to pull in the spirit of what was going on, the, the anguish, the laughter, the tears, the heartbreak, all those things. So uh, that was organic. It wasn't like we had to sit there and try and conjure in our minds what it must be like to feel it. Yeah. You know, our team were actually living it every moment of every yeah. day. And, uh, you know, the, and the key for us from, from the start, from, from the moment we got the phone call from the Premier saying, we want to do a state memorial, Daniel Andrews, to last night. It was all about whatever the family wants, whatever mm. the family wants. And the early meetings were, we don't want this being hijacked. The kids, we, we don't want this. You know, why, why are we doing it this? Why are we doing it at 7 o'clock at night? They wanted to know all the questions and the answers. And then they, they were right, OK, that's a good idea. No, we're not doing that. Bang, out. That's in. We definitely need this. That is non-negotiable. So they were all over it, and uh, they had a, a fantastic input into what was going on last night. And as a result of that, it was a... A very large scale family and friends send off to a great mate. Well done, mate. And not to mention also, I mean, I've never, so, I've never known a person in my life where there was such a public um, display, uh, such a wonderful farewell, and then privately, there are so many other different farewells going on, conversations, some laughter, like raucous mm. laughter would break out, and that was he, he was all about that. Good on you, Eddie. Well done, mate. Thanks, Eddie. Very, very well done. Thanks, Ellie. Mm.